Okay, hello. Um, I start with some disclaimers that I'm overworked from DebConf, you probably guess. Sorry that I didn't have time to prepare the talk, um, but I'm also have one inbox zero at the moment. About the CCC Hamburg, um, which is trolled at the moment by some Nazi, and this has broken out eight days ago, a huge flame war. And I wish I could have ignored it, but I failed. Um, the CCC will be fine. I think the CCC Hamburg will not be fine at all. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm just saying this. Die Nazis come. But let's have ponies now. Jenkins, Jenkins has ponies. Um, I'll have a short intro, a live demo, and what mostly what I want is to discuss how to use Jenkins in Debian. Um, yeah, this is some stuff about me, whatever. Um, who knows what Jenkins is? So some people. Who uses Jenkins? Okay. Um, who wants to use it? Okay. <laughs> Um, Jenkins is a continuous integration server. Um, it's basically, I say it's a cron on steroids with nice reporting and stuff. Um, the package description is Jenkins monitors execution of repeated jobs such as building a software project or jobs run by cron. Among these things, current Jenkins focus on the following two jobs. Building, testing software project projects continuously. Um, so it Basically, um, it build, you can configure it to build on every commit for all br branches or just for certain branches. Um, and it also monitors jobs, um, so it does reporting, creates statistic automatically. Um, yeah, and generally, it's very easy to set up and pr quite immediately produces nice results, graphs and stuff was started in 2004 by Kozuke Kawaguchi, I hope I pronounced this somehow right. Used to be named Hudson and was forked last year um, through some issues with the, with the new ownership from Sun to Oracle. Um, and Jenkins itself is released under the MIT license mostly. There are some other bits, but not much. Um, the community is quite friendly and very active. There are more than 800 plugins. Um, and Jenkins is released every week, every Monday, there's a new release. And long term releases are done roughly four times a year. Um, Jenkins is quite heavily used. Many big names are using it. Um, Michael Kropop made a list of free software projects which is using Jenkins. The upper list with Apache and Django and whatnot. They have all public Jenkins instances. So if you want to pick a Jenkins, I'd suggest you go to these pages and look at Jenkins live. Um, the Debian package has been done by James Page. You can just do up can install Jenkins in VZ. That will install the long-term um, release of Jenkins. And from there, you can install all the plugins. There are some plugins have been packaged in Debian, but you can also just install them from upstream. And you can also upgrade the Jenkins from upstream. Um, yeah, to show you Jenkins. <laughs> this is how it looks on my test instance. We have set up one job building PO parts. And um, so it automatically here shows the previous build. It automatically creates trends how long the build time takes. So it takes 26 sec seconds on average. Um, and now I've configured it to build, I need to check the branch, the develop branch. So. That's still not quite readable. Pardon? Can you oh. The left and right? um, how do I do this? 
I don't have GNOME Terminal installed. Um, how do I change the colors? Pardon? How do I do it in Xterm to change the color? So let's do some stupid change. No, it should build. Why didn't it build? Oh, it builds from upstream, so I configured it to get the upstream, so I need to push something there, which is stupid. Now it will start building here, hopefully. Good. Doesn't this work? That's the problem with live demos. La la la. <laughs> anyway, it would, would build and it will then create the normal build block, um, which is here the controller output, um, which has the output of the job. Um, normally it will not send emails if, if for a successful build, but, but if the build fails it will send an email un, um, until the first successful build again. So it's also it doesn't, it's very quiet. Um, what else? I'm really not prepared. Um, for, for Debian, I was thinking about building automated CDs, like every day and running tests on this, or, try, or build DI on every commit. I don't think it's useful to build um, production cost code on Jenkins, because um, normally in a corporate environment, there's one of a few people who control the Jenkins instant, while I wouldn't want this for Debian. And so I cannot really imagine how to have an open Jenkins where everybody can um, maintain projects and have it secure. So I think for Debian usage, it's better to have it just for QA stuff. Um, and that is basically my talk. <laughs> Do you have suggestions what to use, do with Jenkins and Debian context? So um, I've not been using Jenkins, but I do do an awful lot of automated building using Rebuild D, which is a bit thick, but it does work. Um, and I wonder whether, so the thing that's difficult to do is repeated different ways of building the same package. If you want to build a package, the same version in the same package several different ways using different tools, uh, the problem then is that you can't upload it to one repository, the results. You have to upload it to several places. So for, for cross-building stuff, you, know, you need to build some things and then some other things depending on them and so on. So you've got to have a repository behind it. Um, but it's not the real repository. It's got to be a local one. Uh, and I wonder whether Jenkins helps with that or if uh, it's still difficult. Well, you can configure the jobs differently. What I've done here for this PO part thing is my build steps here are just four or five shell commands. These are the shell commands for this job. So I could have different um, batch scripts or whatever to uh, run build stuff in different environments. But if 
the results of that build need to go into a particular repository depending on how I did the build. Yeah, then you would uh, define uh, different uploads. So, so I just set up n repositories and then n different build rules. Yeah. Uh, okay, maybe. Yeah, I'm relying from IRC. Ulrich uh, Dangel says that uh, GRML uses Jenkins to automatically build CDs on every commit to their packages, which is useful for changes like initramfs. And there's also, uh, well, github.com slash mica slash Jenkins dash Debian dash glue, which helps creating and producing Debian packages with Jenkins. Yeah, I've, I've looked at it, um, but I had my own implementation already written, so I keep using that one, as it's really simple to build packages like this. Um, hi. I used to work for Smoothwall, and recently we um, moved all of the packages to use dpackage, and we ended up using Jenkins as a replacement for WannaBuild. Um, so, with about 300 odd packages, having a Jenkins job for every single one, um, built on i386 and AMD64 using uh, one of the plugins. So Jenkins has loads of plugins which you can throw at this to to do different the same package in different environments, and then those get put into a repository. Um, we're calling S build, I think, from uh, from each Jenkins job, and it's worked really well. It's helped with getting multiple developers working on the same packages. So we have um, commits going into Git into an experimental branch and so on, which then get uploaded into effectively an experimental um, suite in the repository. And then once it's got through code review, using Garrett. Um, which is a Git code view tool. That then ties into Jenkins and then makes the upload and the change logs and puts it into the uh, equivalent of unstable, I think it is. So I'm not in the best position to talk about this because I don't work there anymore, but um, it is certainly possible to do a lot of things and there are people out there doing, doing those things. Um, I haven't used Jenkins, but uh, we we kind of use BuildBot. Could you please uh, tell us the difference? I've never used BuildBot. <laughs> oh. Does sure. someone has used BuildBot or Jenkins that could tell us? No. No. Well, yeah, BuildBot does the same thing. So I thought I could see the, the advantages, but well, thanks anyway. I was uh, waiting a bit uh, to relay this because it seems to be starting a conversation, but you know, following a stream and starting a conversation on IRC can, can have some lag. Uh, Intriguer says that uh, Ubuntu uses Jenkins to test the uh, desktop grades uh, at uh, jenkins.qa.ubuntu.com, these uh, uh, upgrades and installations. So he got the question on how does this compare to pew parts? So, well, Interjerry uh, replies, no idea what kind of good or bad results they're getting. Functional tests, and that's as far as the conversation has got. The pew parts um, test all packages, so you would have to have a way to, to pass 30,000 results. And having this four or five distributions, then you have 100,000 um, Jenkins jobs, and that doesn't work. So I, I don't see the way how to use PU parts with Jenkins. As I understand it, some of those Ubuntu upgrade tests are um, uh, installation of almost all the packages that can be co-installed together and then upgrading and seeing what, what happens. They're also testing of live images and all sorts of other things. So, yeah, that comes back. So you're saying that you have to have a job per package that you want to build? 
Because the, I mean, the way that want to build and rebuild do work, you just give it a list of jobs and it does the same thing for all of them. So in my case, I run app get build dep dash a s build architecture foo, and they're all exactly the same. That's the whole point. Um, but I don't want to have to define that individually uh, 17,000 times once for each package in the archive. That seems like crazy talk. Um, is there some way of automating that when they're all the same so that we can use this kind of nice infrastructure? Which There are plugins for having um, job templates. So you can just define the jobs from the template and cr create 30,000 templates if you want to. I wouldn't do 30,000, but doing 200 is fine. Yeah, uh, Woolrich uh, says that there, uh, one advantage of, Enkins, uh, of Jenkins is the ecosystem. You have plenty of uh, plugins available, and it's somehow the, the standard tool for continuous integration. So I guess this, uh, this is part of those uh, plugins. Yeah. <coughs> one of these plugins, for example, passes these, the test results here and displays them. And there are plugins for all version control systems for several uh, test test suits for notification for lots of things. So where do all your logs end up? Are they going in a database or a massive directory or where go what? The result logs of the builds. They stay on the go? file system. There's um, no. Where was I with the shell? So this is the PU. Can you read this? Not really. Um, so the, the configuration is this one XML file. There's the workspace, which has the PU part source code after the build now. And the builds directory has the different builds. And then let's take the last one. And the archive contains the produced uh, files. So it keeps the files in a workspace, and then for the one, each build, it keeps the logs there. And can you drive it without the fancy interface? So the, without the? Without all that web foo stuff that I didn't really want. I mean, it's, it's, this should just run in the background. Yeah, there, there's That's just for viewing the results. There's a command line interface as well. But I only use the web interface. I really like the web interface, which really surprised me. But it's very usable. and. The command line interface is also useful if you want to um, run several Jenkins slaves and control them remotely, then you use the command line interface. Um, so I think the reason this talk is about Jenkins and not about BuildBot or, and why everyone is so excited about it is because of the huge number of plugins. So it integrates with so many different tools. So um, Perhaps not so relevant for most of the Debian work, but when you're doing development in a code repository and you've got branches and you've got multiple developers, uh, you can throw stuff like code coverage tools and so on at it and get nice um, analysis and stuff going on. And that's that's why that's what makes Jenkins so um, good, you know. Um, uh, well, one thing that it's a shame we couldn't see in the demo was like the live output of the build scrolling in the web interface. That was quite a. Uh, I think Can you speak a bit louder, please? Oh, sorry. The the scrolling. Oh my God, the scrolling output of the compile. So if you're um, making commits and then soon after looking at the build in Jenkins, you can see it as it breaks, um, with some nice Ajax. Uh, yeah. So Holger's showing you that now. So does this have to run on the same machine as the builds are going on on, or they can all the routes and builds be on different hardware? How does that all yeah. work? Or does it have to be on the same machine as the kind of public web interface part for people to see the public what runs where? No, you can run um, Jenkins Slave on other host. And then schedule jobs there. Yeah.
Well, the, the talk is going on on IRC. Uh, well, he just told me no relaying needed. Sorry. <laughs> Any other? Do you hear me? Yeah. Just not a question, actually. I really m a lot buying, I'm standing as a much louder, as I please. can. Lou louder, OK. I'm really buying the IT Holger mentioned in this last slide about auto building DI. So it will not happen if nobody does that. But I can promise you we will have a lot better DI if we have a DI that, bi that builds from our Git. So I would very much welcome someone volunteering for doing that, implementing Jenkins on one of our machines and building DI for every commit or something like this, building the UDEBs and building the ISO images. This, this will be a really very important improvement to DI. I can't do that. I'm not able for doing that. I have too much things to do elsewhere. But if someone feels like implementing this, he or she would be very, very welcome. Any more questions? If there are no more questions, let's close this. Thank you, Holger. Thank you. <laughs>